you brought up kind of that guerrilla style of just getting the outfits, getting the props and all of that coming together so quick. I got to be honest, in my experience at WWE, I've, I've always been amazed at how fast that stuff comes together, that you would think maybe there was a little bit more long-term preparation. And you're like, no, day is show, time to go, and let's get it done. So, so yeah, no, look, I do think, and I do think that's, uh, man, I, I know people hate me sucking up to Vince, but that's what he does. He demands that kind of uh, immediacy. Here's the idea. How do we execute the idea? Okay, first, send a runner to go get this. You know what I mean? And everybody starts going, hey, do we need this for that? You know what I mean? And, and, it's, and it comes together, and everybody goes out and gets it. That's why when he says something and people go, yes, sir, great. And it's getting done now. You know what I mean? And that's who he surrounds himself with. And that is a genius business strategy to surround yourself with uh, sergeants that will execute. And whatever the mission is, they accomplish it. You know what I mean? And, and they, they don't come back and go, I'm sorry, we couldn't do that. And yeah. so, so uh, that is the immediacy of how when he says, this is what we're doing, that's what we're doing. And man, that's... That's what a general does in the army. That's what a uh, admiral does in the navy. You know what I mean? Like that's they they send their the mission out and and they leave it up to their sergeants and, and the enlisted troops to execute that mission. But that's that's the genius of Vince McMahon. Hate me if you want to. It's none of my business. You get back to the arena, everyone starts seeing the clips. They air on television. Did anyone on the crew, team, staff? come up to you and think maybe this wasn't such a good idea? <laughs> uh, well, to be quite honest, I was thinking that about halfway through. Um, so, so it's funny you say that because there's actually a moment in the start of one of those clips, you know, the beginning one on the march where I think it was the second clip. You're, you're marching, but you kind of have this vibe into your step, like your body language reads. I, I don't, what I didn't we know what right? we were walking into. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, look, I'll I'll fight a man if I'm mad at him or whatever. But I did not know what we were walking into, and uh, and I knew Ming worked for WCW, so I think it's enough enough said on that. What were your favorite memories of the whole day that you do remember? The camaraderie, me and X Pac, and me and Billy, and me and Hunter and China. I can't stress enough that China was such a huge part of the creative. Uh, body that was DX. Um, she had funny ideas and, and it was a, a conglomeration of all of us kind of together. And so, and then everybody doing their own thing individually in the midst of that. And so, man, it was, it was really cool. That's what I remember about all of it. The most is being able to do that and create that with my friends. And, uh, when I look back on that, that's what I, that's what I remember is, man, I had a really good time with my friends and a bunch of people got to watch it on television and I got paid for it. You know what I mean? Like, should I save some of that money and not done all that blow? Yes, Ryan, that's exactly what I should have done, but that's not the path I chose. <laughs> so, so I think most of us have had friends who like to go out and get into fights. So in a situation like this, was there anyone in your crew that was hoping that they may come out and it may turn into something bigger? I, look, I don't, I don't think so because not, not everybody in there was, is a, was a fighter. Like I, that's why I was hesitant because I, I'm not going to back down. That's for sure. Uh, I don't go out looking for fights, but at that age and in that frame of mind, I wouldn't mind throwing hands. You know what I mean? I've been beat up before. Uh, and, and if it was on TV, all the, all the better. However, I don't think any of us were willing to fight anybody. I just didn't, like I said, I didn't know what we were walking into, man. Michael McLanahan, who after hearing you think this, he's Irish, but he might be Keith Lee. Check this out. Oh, okay. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it like this. What were some of the logistical nuances of the DX invasion that were the most cumbersome in trying to pull off the segment? Was anyone involved in ever suggesting you should put a stop to this angle? <laughs> so you read that eloquently, uh, Ryan. Thank you for that. My pleasure. Uh, iteration. Um, but here. yeah, yeah. So uh, totally forgot what the question was, but it was something about wrestling. 
It was about the cumbersome logistics. Of oh, cumbersome. Have you ever heard that song, Cumbersome? I, I'm not familiar. Uh, Can you give me three quarters of a bar so we don't yes, have to say? Uh, <laughs> oh, I can't think of the words now. I'm put on the spot, but it's uh, too wrong or too right. Damn tonight. Mm, cumbersome. It's a, uh, we'll play a clip on here. You should all look it up. I I th like. Yeah, I don't know who sings it. But uh, anyway, the cumbersome part was the legality of it. You know what I mean? Like we, nobody was going to stop our mission once we once we got there and started to do it other than the cops other than the officials uh and so they, they were the cumbersome part is navigating and not getting arrested and, and trying to do that other than that look they rented a van they got us down there lickety split they had the van the the jeep meet us there uh we got it off the trailer we got on it and started shooting you know what i mean so it was it was very uh fly on the wall run and gun here we go so fast that we can get stuff and look jeff jarrett and i did the same thing after the oj simpson uh deal in california with vince russo where we couldn't uh in Br brentwood it was called we couldn't stop because the cops were circling you couldn't stop but we just jumped out of the car and ran down there and like took pictures for the wwf magazine in front of oj simpson's house in brentwood right after he, he had allegedly killed some people you know what i mean so that was russo's from way back was guerrilla warfare like just take it just take it and <laughs> see what happens you know what i mean and thank god we didn't get arrested all right aiden was going to ask was it a tanker jeep and you just went over all of that so let's go to low it quality was definitely, it was definitely a jeep if Not we had been all in a tank it would have been horrible because you wouldn't have seen any of us. Have you seen the movie Fury? I highly recommend it. Low quality music productions ask, was <laughs> Road Dog smoking any left-handed cigarettes before heading to WCW? I, I was. And the reason I know that is because it was on a day that ended in Y and I was alive. So I, I'm sure that that happened. Um, and that helps with the inhibitions a little bit. Uh, and hopefully it would have helped with the stomps and the punches should they have come. I, I'm just trying to figure out what, all of the days. I get it. I get it. <laughs> you, 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 you're good, you. You guys were fighting over market share and ratings, but do you think as businessmen, the two top dogs were trying to put each other out of business at all? Well, I mean, I don't know how long it was after that, but at some point Vince bought the other company. So yeah, they were trying to put each other out of the, out of the business for sure. Um, but I don't know if we were there yet. We were just trying to win, you know what I mean? And it, and it was, and I guess we, I guess that was what we thought was we won when our ratings were higher than theirs. I guess that's what we thought we won. I want to touch on those ratings for a second too. We talked about those huge numbers earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you find a huge RAW or a few a huge uh, AEW, one of those. Uh, or, or SmackDown, and then you see what their ratings are, and they're nothing compared to with the numbers you mentioned earlier. But if you wait then, which we didn't have then, and consider three weeks later the DVRs come out, mm -hmm. and so you know how many people DVR'd it to watch it later, and that's what a lot of people have to do. So the number increases uh, a great deal when you counter in or you count in those those DVRs after the three week period, and so. Look, we, when I was writing SmackDown, we did some really good shows that did really well after, after the DVRs were figured in. So to where it's like, holy crap, we did a 4-1 or something after DVRs. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. That old man, Nielsen, was he might have been a crackhead or alcoholic or something. I don't know. But, uh, but it's hard to figure those things out. So just watch, like watch wrestling if you like it. Don't if you don't. It was like the first popular algorithm to make that work out, I think. Oh, like yeah? Full of formula and adjustments to make Nielsen's ratings and, and it's all It's crazy. That. All right. When you heard that Eric challenged Vince, what went through your head? Because you know that Vince can't respond at that point. <laughs> yeah, but I, at that time we had gone so crazy, I wondered. You know what I mean? I didn't know, like... Is he going to show up? Like he was kind of, this was a long time ago. He was young and jacked and you know what I mean? Like, okay, is he going to go down there? Uh, and Wrong so I, look, while I didn't, 
<laughs> That's the best childish joke ever. Uh, I, and I think I actually got it from Ricky Morton like a long, long time ago. Uh, hey, you going to go with us tonight? Yeah, where y'all going? Down there? Really down where? <laughs> down here. Uh, but yeah, so so I have no idea what we were talking about. Now I want to get but I wondered if Eric would come and show up and beat up Vince or vice versa. Let's see if there would have been a fight between Sean and Eric Bischoff, both having some martial arts experience. How would have that one? Ooh. It's an interesting one, right? Yeah, yeah. Look, Sean was, I don't know what Eric did in his off time, but I know Sean was wrestling every every night and kicking people in the face every night and getting kicked in the face every night. And so I think uh, X-Pac would have took him. But I again, I don't I mean, know what Eric... Eric got, uh, took out Ernest the Cat Miller, man. Well... Did he? <laughs> I guess I guess that's what I ask because I don't know. I, I understand he trains in the mar mixed martial arts and and he could probably tie me in a pretzel. And I got no qualms saying that. But at the time, I feel like X Pac had the advantage. Age. 